Governments around the world have condemned the military coup in Myanmar. The UK for one has imposed sanctions on entities and individuals funding the military. More than 500 demonstrators have lost their lives and more than 2,000 have been detained. UK's ambassador to the UN, Barbara Woodward, spoke to Beyond recently and she said that the loss of life in Myanmar is appalling and a political solution is needed and fast. Take a look. Britain has been on the forefront in coordinating efforts and taking measures to put an end to the military coup in that country. You've imposed sanctions on mm -hmm. entities uh, which provide funding to the military and have led special human rights councils at the UN, just to name a few. However, the killing of innocent civilians continue, yeah. and now there is possibly going to be a refugee crisis pouring yeah. into neighboring countries yeah. in Myanmar. On March 31st, UN Special Envoy Kristin Schraner Bergner said widespread systematic attacks on civilians in Myanmar orchestrated by leaders of the military coup demand, quote, a firm, unified and mm. resolute international response. She also said that time is running out. So what steps is the United Nations Security Council planning on mm. taking and what needs to be done? So you're right. Um, we did, uh, from the moment the coup was evident on the 1st of February, uh, we convened a Security Council meeting which resulted in uh, the statement that you saw on the 4th of February. Um, the situation continued to deteriorate. We saw uh, another presidential statement with the US in the chair this time uh, on the 10th of March. But tragically, we saw the events on the 27th of March, just last weekend, uh, when uh, more people were killed by the military, uh, and ironically on uh, National Army Day. So a real tragedy that the military turned its guns on its own people. And you're right too, I think the neighbouring countries of Myanmar, including of course India, do face a particular challenge here as refugees uh, seek to flee the fighting and the uncertainty and put pressure on the border. So we recognise uh, that neighbours, India, China, Thailand for example, all have a particular role to play in looking for a solution. What we're looking for overall is an end to the violence, the release of those who've been detained, and for Myanmar to return to the path of democracy. And you're right, the question is, uh, how do we manage that? Uh, the UK and the US have put uh, bilateral sanctions on uh, individuals in the military, but also on economic enterprises that we know are run by or associated with the military in order to try and choke off uh, the access to funds and the access to weapons that the military has and stop the shooting uh, on their own people. Um, but we also need, I think, a way of having peace talks. And I would say that the ASEAN countries in the region have played an important role so far in coming together and in trying to uh, bring the parties uh, in Myanmar uh, towards a framework for a solution. We haven't got there yet, uh, but the ASEAN countries have an important summit coming up at the end of April, and it might be that we can move forward uh, in that way. So at one level, trying to put pressure on the military uh, to stop the killing and to come back to talks and find a negotiated way back to a path of democracy. Uh, and then on the other hand, to encourage that. And you mentioned uh, Christine Bergener, the special envoy of the UN. Um, she is going to the region uh, this weekend. Uh, and we very much hope that in talks with uh, all of the ASEAN countries, uh, including Myanmar, uh, she might be able to contribute to finding a way to bring to an end the coup and help Myanmar back on the path to democracy. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.